Welcome to In the Chat Room from Better World Technology. In the Chat Room is a dynamic interview series where industry leaders, innovators, and experts gather to share their insights on the ever-evolving landscape of technology and business. I'm your host, Matt Bauer, co-founder and director of Better World Technology, and we're excited to have in the chat room today Evan Francine co-founder and CEO of FR Secure and Security Studio, two valuable and close partners to us here at Better World. Welcome, Evan. Thank you. It's great to be here. Okay, let's dive in, Evan. You've, you've had an illustrious career and are very well known in and around and outside IT security, cybersecurity circles. At the top of your blog, you, you come right out with it on a personal front. You're a, and I'll quote, Christian, husband, father, grandfather, friend, business leader, a CISO, a hacker, a certified rescue diver, Harley biker, welder, American Mexican, cancer <laughs> survivor, recovered alcoholic, a harsh self-critic, a problem solver, and a problem creator. I love it. And so I just was hoping maybe we can pick one of those things that's on your mind right now, just kind of getting it all out there. Uh, is there anything you can pick uh, from from that long list uh, and focus yeah. on it? Or is something something that's res, you know resonating with you now? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that people appreciate most about me is transparency. You know, I f I feel like the more I share about myself, there's a connection there in something. Like maybe you're not a Christian, but you're an alcoholic. You know, maybe you're not a Christian or an alcoholic, but you're a diver. So I think the more you open up about who you are, the more you connect with other people. Um, and, and behind all of this is, you know, ADHD. You know, the list is long because uh, it's hard to keep me still for any more than just a few minutes. <laughs> well, and, and, and that's it's interesting because, you know, some of these elements are, you know, society looks at them in negative ways or, you know, alcoholism, you know, ADHD. Uh, but they also contribute to uh, spurring you to the great things you've done and who you are. And they're all part of the, the tapestry, right? So you can't remove one piece or another. Right. So it's uh, interesting. Yeah, that's so, that's so true. And I think there's there's so much stigma, especially in, in today's world, right? Uh, mental health. You know, how often do people talk about things uh, like depression or suicide? Um, if you talk about it, then it's no longer a stigma and it's also disarming. So when I share the things about me, what, what are you going to use against me? Are you going to, Oh, you're just a Christian. Yeah, I know. I already said that, you know, let's get onto something that, you know, maybe more impactful. Uh, but usually it's like the alcoholism is definitely one that's resonated with a lot of people. You know, I've had a lot of people come up to me afterwards and, you know, this is what I do. Do you think I have a drinking problem? At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I think. It's what you think. I can give you my opinion. Um, but that serves us so well in professional circles as well, you know, with information security. One of our biggest challenges is connecting and resonating with people. You know, securing computers, that's easy. Computers are binary. They only do what they tell them to do. People, on the other hand, are really difficult. They're challenging uh, so getting to know people, getting to understand what motivates them, why they do the things they do, uh, and and, and be, being a leader in this industry, you, I'll start off. I'll share myself, and maybe that'll put you at ease where you can share with me as well, and then I can help you better. Yeah, absolutely. And as one who's gone through your VCSO course uh, mm -hmm. Uh, with Security Studio, I think we've had about fifteen of us at Better World that have gone through it already. Oh, I love it. You um, guys, you know, you learn. We love that. seeing you guys in there. <laughs> you learn that piece about the people being the critical element, you know. So what you're saying definitely, definitely rings true. So, well, let, let's dive into some of uh, some of the work things. So you're uh, as co-founder and CEO of FR Secure and Security Studio, two household names in the industry. You've spent decades helping organizations uh, from Fortune 500 companies and small businesses. And, uh, you know, but let's dial it back a little bit to that through line, you know, uh, from your early days as a uh, self-proclaimed hacker and uh, 
discovering, hey, yeah, I can make money of this. And, and how did that lead to founding these great companies? Yeah. So I grew up, uh, I mean, it goes back. I grew up uh, an only child uh, of two Marine Corps parents. So I grew up on base. Um, as I got older, I got a little more rebellious. Both my parents were into technology. My mother was one of the earliest female executives at IBM. And so they were always bringing home technology stuff. And I've got ADHD and I'm kind of rebellious now. Uh, so I broke stuff. You know, that's how I learned most things was by breaking them. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's a lot of early stories of, you know, you're not proud of those things anymore, but they were bragging rights back then. And as I navigated, you know, what I wanted to do with my life, and that's one of the things that I have five kids. And one of the things I've always taught them is try everything. You don't know what you're going to be good at. You don't know what you're going to be built for unless you try it. So I did the same thing. You know, I did that when I was a kid. I was a security guard, cashier, stockbroker. I passed my Series 7 in 63, believe it or not. Um, I was a bartender, warehouse worker, furniture installer, loan officer, <laughs> bill collector. There's probably something else in there, too, before I ever got into IT. I was always hacking things because that was my curiosity. I was always curious on how things worked. And if I, and the best way to learn how something works is to break it and then put it back together again. I think so many people are risk averse. You know, they want to know how something works, but what if I break it? Go ahead, you know, break it. Because then you'll know how to put it back together again and you'll be so much better. So my first, all of that stuff led to my first job, which was actually at IBM. Uh, cleaning boot sector viruses off of Windows 3 machines. Um, not a very fun job, but it was intriguing enough. It was interesting enough. I actually got fired from that job. Um, and then where did I end up? Oh, Jask Software. We made Paint Shop Pro. That was a fantastic job because there I was able to... It was very innovative then. This was, you know, as the dot-com bubble was starting to get bigger and bigger just before it was going to burst... And at the advent of digital cameras. So when you had digital cameras back then, you had, you know, the Kodak boxes, basically. You had two options for editing those photos. You had Photoshop, which was 1200 bucks, or PaintShop Pro. And PaintShop Pro was shareware, basically. So we were a very, very popular website. Uh, one of the top 10 most visited websites in the world at that time. But for me as a geek and a network guy, I became a network guy. Cisco was my, my flavor. Um, it was awesome. I got to figure out how to load balance things before load balancers were a thing, um, how to cluster a SQL 6.5 server, which for people who know SQL 6, version 6.5, there is no clustering. It's uh, SQL 7 is when clustering came out. So we had to hack it. We had to figure out how to make that cluster uh, and Microsoft actually contacted us. We thought they were going to get really mad. They actually wanted to know how we did it so they could cluster <laughs> it in seven. Um, I went to U.S. Bank after that. You, uh, Jask Software was acquired by Corel, uh, which is a Cana French Canadian company. Um, went to U.S. Bank, built their threat and vulnerability team and their incident response team. And then I went to United Health deployed laptop encryption to 46,000 laptops, which was kind of boring, but sort of fun. Mm -hmm. Anyway, long story. My last real job was MGI Pharma. It was a $4 billion pharmaceutical, and I was their CISO. I loved that job. Um, and I'd still be there today, uh, but they were acquired by um, a Japanese pharmaceutical, which then left me with vested stock options and figuring out what my next career move was. And I started FR Secure then in 2008. And the one frustration I had over all those years that had built up was the failure of people to do things the right way. You know, in corporate America, it's you do just enough sometimes to get by. You have to play the, pol the political game, you know, rather than doing things the right way, well, that's not my responsibility or Johnny's going to get offended if I do that. 
this was an opportunity for me to say, all right, we're going to do security the right way. And not that we had all the answers, but if somebody can point out where something's not the right way, well, then we need to adjust and do it the right way, which then brought the, the mission of fixing the broken industry. Anyway, it's a long story, but um, that's why I'm here. At the end of the day, I don't, it's not about money. It's about mission. And the mission really comes from, as you pointed out earlier, I'm a Christian. I'm going to die someday. All of your listeners, I don't know if they knew this, and it's, I'm not a downer, but we all die. And when I die, I want to hear Jesus say, well done. And that's that's all that matters. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it was a uh, long answer, wasn't it? You, no, no, that was great. That was great. And uh, I, I think that leads well into my next question, which is you're a noted author. And uh, in 2019, you published the book Unsecurity. And uh, the, the, the tagline is information security is failing, breaches are epidemic. How can we fix this broken industry? So, you know, it's been six, seven years since you wrote those words, maybe even more. Sometimes it takes uh, many years to write a book, so I'm not sure when, when, yeah. it, when, how long it took to write. But, you know, what is what has changed since then? Um, you know, do you have more hope or less hope, or uh, what? 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 What do you? What's your attitude towards you know where you were then versus now? Yeah, well, you know, I opened that book with comparing this to a game. Uh, you know, I'm a very competitive person. Um, and so, you know, the point was we're losing. We were, lo we're losing the game. And, you know, using that same analogy, uh, we're still losing. You know, we're maybe, you know, it's, uh, it was maybe halftime, you know, just to try to build off this analogy a little more. Maybe it was halftime and we were down by 20 points. Now it's like third quarter and we're down by 25 points. So it's, it's still, we're still losing ground, just not maybe at the pace we were before. But now mm -hmm. with the advent of quantum computing and AI, it's, oh man, I don't know. It's, it's, it doesn't look good. The, the problem for us just as human, it's a human problem. The problem for us as humans is we continue to adopt new technology faster than our ability to use it responsibly. So it's not the technology that's a problem. It's not necessarily us that's a problem. It's our use of technology and the fact that we don't consider what's responsible before I use it. Maybe I should learn how it works. Maybe I should learn um, what some of the risks are if I plug this thing into my network before I plug it into my network. But the problem just continues to compound when you don't get back to the root of what the problem is. So I think, I think the problem has gotten worse uh, I'm not a doomsday guy. I'm not a not a conspiracy theory guy. Just logic tells you there's lots of evidence to show that it's getting worse. And I was recently I was asked a couple of months ago by um, members of my team to write an update to that book. Mm. So it's funny that you bring that up. So Unsecurity Version Two is in the works right now, and it will be. Awesome. My goal is to have it done um, at least ready for the editor by end of June. Oh, great. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So we can uh, hopefully look forward to that uh, maybe published by the holidays or something. Give us our updates, yeah. uh, what we need. Um, well, maybe yeah, maybe this ties in with my, my last. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was, this one is also very... I'm, I feel, sometimes I feel like I'm the guy, and I don't know if you ever feel this way, but sometimes I feel like I'm the guy that says the things that everybody's thinking, but nobody wants to say, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, and maybe that comes with like, I'm at this point in my career now, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid fifties. Um, essentially my retirement is taken care of, you know, I, I'm not motivated by that kind of stuff. I don't want to get rich. So there's a point where you're just content. And so when you get to this point, it's like, I'm just going to say what I think is the right thing to say. And I'm going to, and if it offends people, so be it. Whereas when I was younger in my career, you know, I had to, be, I had to worry about that because, well, I might piss off my boss and I might get fired. Um, so I, I think it's, it's sort of, it's sort of, 
you know, the calling now is to share as much wisdom as I can before I do, you know, die. And this book is going to be very blunt. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be upset by it, but then a lot of people will be like, yes, finally somebody said it. Right. Well, let, let's, uh, you know, kind of bringing it back into the station, you know, Evan, looking into your crystal ball, uh, and maybe this is part of the process you're, you're doing with the update of the book, um, not to, you know, do any spoilers here of what's in there, but, uh, you know, what do you see ahead? What, what, what are you focusing your energies uh, on, the, this, on these days, which apparently uh, I think the book is probably, you know, and I, I think probably kind of bringing it to that one focus I, I thought of when I was when I was writing this, you know, sort of Jack Palance, you know, that one thing <laughs> in, mm. in City Slickers, you know, sort of yeah. focus on that one thing. What, what, what do you what, what is that for you right now? Oh, man. I mean, being an ADHD guy, there, there's never one thing. Right, right. Yeah, like, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's a sad retrospect. I might have rewritten this, you know, a little bit. What yeah, I wish I could. Focusing on? <laughs> well, and for any of the listeners, you know, who have ADHD, you know, or have kids, you know, I've met a lot of people that have kids that have ADHD and they're worried about their children. And ADHD is a superpower. I think most mental things it, it's you have a thing right it's how you use it that makes it a superpower or a curse so adhd is definitely a superpower at times because you can pick up multiple things you're comfortable in chaos it's you know for incident response it's like it's an awesome skill to have believe it or not uh for you know doing meetings sometimes having discussions sometimes trying to get a project done by a specific due date, you know, those things can be curses. Like uh, my wife tried to be my administrative assistant for a while, uh, which was good because I didn't have to explain to her what I was doing at work every day anymore, but it was bad because it, she can't do it. I mean, it's, it, you're just unmanageable, but anyway, what am I working on? So the book is one thing, the most, significant highest priority thing on my plate right now is the upcoming CISSP mentor program. So that one kicks off on, in two weeks from tomorrow. And that program started in 2010. Um, it's free, free CISSP training uh, and mentorship. So the mentorship comes, you have to do it at scale. Uh, but the, I think we've had over 100,000 students since 2000. 10, wow. um, in 143 countries. Hmm. So, so that's my number one priority just to get my stuff squared away for that. And then other things, the book and, um, this thing call, I call project broken mirror, which is, uh, it's about trying to protect critical infrastructure. You know, our, our critical infrastructure in the United States is in some places it's great. In some places it's laughable, but the problem really lies in the fact that we don't know what it is. So we need to figure that, that out. So three things, not one thing, but three. All right. Good <laughs> enough. Well, well, uh, thank you, Evan. What, what a great conversation. And, and we look forward to collaborating more in uh, 2025 and beyond. Uh, and thank you for watching and listening to Better World Technologies in the chat room. To dive deeper into our episodes and learn more about our work, visit betterworldtechnology.com. Stay connected by subscribing to our YouTube channel for exclusive content, behind the scenes insights, and more. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to follow us on Spotify and tell a colleague, keep innovating, keep connecting. We'll see you next time.